Hello and welcome to Tales from the Tavern, the Sea of Thieves official podcast. We're now at number 13, which is... Unlucky. Unlucky. Oh, in the official, <laughs> in the official <laughs> UK charts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was going to say lucky oh, for some. I wonder what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I jumped the gun, sorry. Yeah. Lucky for some. Is, yep. it, is that yeah. the thing or is it unlucky for some? I don't know what... You, what? Well, Move have on. you seen Apollo 13? <laughs> They didn't land on the moon, there's a clip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> Is that the one with Tom Hanks? Yeah. Yeah, I know things. <laughs> I've seen it. <laughs> um, so obviously if you haven't uh, been watching the videos, then you should go check them out on our YouTube channel. We've had the 10 things you need to know about Sea of Thieves so far. We've had a behind the scenes on non-verbal combat. And no, since- non-verbal oh. communication! Non-verbal combat. Non-verbal <laughs> Combat. I want to see that. Verbal combat. Me, but please whisper. <laughs> he's, he's, I say that, that every, every single, single time. Every single time. Yeah. 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 We've had an insane. We've lost him. Sorry, Katie. Like, like, too much yelling. He's like, he's just like, oh. Okay. Try that again. <laughs> but an it's inside like story on a new type of multiplayer game. And okay. Studio okay. okay. uh, update from, up. from, from Shelley uh, on the Ferry of the Damned. And we had the full New York Comic Con panel as well, which is starring. You three. Starring. Indeed. Yes. Starring. Starring. And Pete uh, Hentz, but lest we forget. Mm-hmm. <laughs> lest, <laughs> lest we forget. Maybe lest we remember not blessed him. We forget. <laughs> Stand in for Pete today. Yeah. He's Kato. Yeah. Yeah, and if you haven't noticed, uh, if you are watching, we have a small dog. Well, obviously, if you're watching, you've seen the dog in the middle of the table. I feel like so far. Uh, but if you're not watching <laughs> us on the video, uh, on the video, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it going. Oh, where keep are we going. going here with If this? you're listening to the audio, you may not be aware that there is a dog on the table. If you want to see the dog, watch this on YouTube. And if you're watching it on YouTube, you can listen to us in any reputable podcast app. You can. See? There we go. I there saved we go. it. Back on track. Shelley's normally way better than this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking. <laughs> yeah. They must be really good you at editing go. these. <laughs> 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 uh, okay, yeah. And uh, obviously, if you aren't an insider, then go over to seethieves.com forward slash insider and sign up for our insider program to um, for your chance to get access to the game uh, so let's introduce everyone around the table uh, yeah two. Joe Neat executive producer I'm oh my god this is a I'm shambles. Mike Chapman design director <laughs> which one Why are we looking um, I don't know I'm John McFarlane community video manager Emma Bridal engagement manager Shelley Preston senior designer and uh, Kato the dog <laughs> What an intro Lord that was. Wants. Wasn't it? Yeah. Hopefully shambles. people are still with us. You nailed it. Yeah, nailed it. <laughs> okay. Well done, John. So, community content. Yes. That's that's your job. Let's... Uh, <laughs> let's Why let's, is that funny? <laughs> what's been going on uh, this month? I'm trying to think. When did we do the last one? It was post-Gamescom. Post-Gamescom, yeah. September, October. We had a whole bunch of insiders here. That was pretty big. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was awesome. So that was during EGX. That was so yeah. We've done. I, so, well, I think since the last podcast, we, we've done PAX. PAX. Yeah, PAX was after Gamescom. Yeah, yeah. Yep. In Seattle. EGX in Birmingham, and New York Comic Con. And Brazil and Game Brazil Show. And Brazil Game Show. Yeah. So we've been pretty busy out and about, and then we brought some insiders back here. Which was the best thing it ever. Was awesome. It was awesome. Yeah, it was yeah. fantastic. It genuinely was. So they got to come obviously here to the studio, play the game. Yes. Um, and then obviously they got a studio tour. Yes, I gave the studio tour. Yeah, they got to see the Kudo Phil playtest uh, of like the early prototype footage from like our original pitch kind of uh, session, yeah. which was super cool. And then uh, and they got to talk to us while we were perched on boy band chairs as well. It yeah. Did, yeah, it was just waiting for you all to stand up when the yeah. course I like the boy band chairs. Uh, it was my idea. Yeah. I like the boy band chairs. <laughs> it's very it nice. felt a bit weird. We tried to keep it casual by sitting on those. Purple chairs, you know, the low ones. Oh, they, the they're, leg they're, chairs. They're also rocking chairs, <laughs> some of them. <laughs> didn't, so. feel right. didn't, feel yeah. right. didn't feel right. Didn't feel right. Didn't work. Didn't feel right at all. So we, we had the boy band chairs. Yeah. So it was our first insider event mm-hmm. uh, of its kind. I'm sure we'll do something. The inaugural or yes. inside event, as I said on Twitter, some on Twitter, some people picked that up and were like, "Oh, oh there's going to be more." Yeah. I was like, "Is that what that means?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, wait, it was, no. It, it was but, nice and local for us, and because it was local, they had the slight advantage of being able to come here. I thought you were going to say go to the pub afterwards with, with uh, us all as well. I've had some emails from them the last two days. They were like, it was great. And Brewdog after was great. <laughs> <laughs> it just took them that long to recover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. But genuinely, like the excitement like that, that 
for for us as much as for the insiders, I think, from chatting to them and listening yeah. to their questions and seeing enthusiasm, like for for you guys, especially with the kind of the Q and A yeah. part of it, right? Well, uh, we all went home with such a buzz, didn't we? Like like meeting. I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, was I mean, it's, dead. it's cool to do obviously things like this, like the podcast, yes. where but it still feels one way. You don't get the interaction, you don't get yeah. the follow up questions. So it was just so natural just to be able to speak to people who also share a love for the game and yeah. what we're building and you know they've got questions they want to ask and it just feels completely natural it's also very these exciting are, these are the people that we're making it for so to be able to talk yeah. to them face to face is Some a special thing it's awesome. we're just going I've asked everything I can possibly think of asking I was just like just ask them about themselves maybe favourite biscuits birthdays I don't know they were so like, wonderful say something about biscuits I but we didn't like, answer it yeah. we say q and I mean, it's too hard we, a question we, we want to, to make anyway. it feel just like a conversation a just a chat yeah. So yeah. it wasn't, it sounds more formal than it actually was. The boy I mean, we Manchester just... did make it a little bit formal. But, yeah. But, but it was funny, I think, like, I, I think it might have been the same person, but say Rich, did you say? Which, what? The, that said that they'd come in thinking they didn't have any more questions. Or no, the, uh, it so. was our sort of forums crew. Oh, okay. Uh, they yeah. were just like, we've asked all our questions ever. Yeah, but somebody said that like almost at the start and then once the conversation started and then they just they started, started asking something because uh, they were just yeah. bouncing and at the end they were like oh wow I've learned so much more that I yeah. didn't think I had questions it was just a natural about. interaction yeah, yeah, and yeah. one question would spark somebody else and there'd be that yeah. flow of ideas so it was, yeah. it was awesome yeah. yeah. and we were also well you three were at the New York Comic Con playing with yeah. a pig and Oh, famous, yeah. Instagram famous pig. Yeah, Christopher the pig. I showed someone this in a meeting and they just were just despairing at it. Respectfully conversing with him. He was a very civilised <laughs> yeah, A little bow tie. He was yeah. eating an apple. Very, he was, was, was awesome. He's got his own petting. Instagram. Very gentle petting and I got permission, I got permission first. <laughs> I did. To pet the pig. I like, can, I, can I pet your pig, please? <laughs> she was like, of course you can. And I yeah. petted him and I, I, I genuinely what does expected... What the pig feel like? Well, this is the thing, right? Because you think it's not Peppa Pig. People don't know what those in the US, do they? Rafa, a cartoon pig. The cartoon, it's not a cartoon pig. Well, I mean, you, you, pig you know, you, you just look at the pig <laughs> and you think it's going to be like skin yeah. Yeah. to touch. Is he it bristly? Was, yeah. It was like a porcupine, like spines. So uh. It was really tough. I'm not sure whether it was that particular breed of pig. I imagine it was. But the Christopher pig. It was a very... <laughs> Chris, Chris, Christoph pig. One. It was just a... It was almost a... I want to pet you. Oh, I feel like recoiling. I'm not sure. Yeah. Was, just just for clarity, confusing. there turmoil. was a pig in turmoil. the bar at your hotel. Mm. This isn't yeah. like a weird Comic-Con thing. Was, oh, yeah. No, it was just it was, a pig It was there. as weird as that sounds as well. Yeah. yeah. Walking into a hotel Especially lobby when we got there pig. and we'd not slept. I think I saw the photo whilst I... Before I went to bed, I woke up the next morning going, I must have imagined that. Yeah. Very strange. And he had his little Cheerios on the table, didn't he? Yeah, his little did. snack. But it's funny because you could like take a few and give them to him, and then but so there was a big crowd around him, and then when no one was watching, he jumped up on the table and knocked it over, and then was just like. He worked it out. I was actual Comic Con. I, yeah, yeah. I got distracted by the pig. So what? What, what did we do? What yeah. Did we why? Show? Why were you there? I mean, we know, but we were there to do our our panel. Yeah. On, on a, a new type a new, of mu- new kind of multiplayer. Yeah, so we did this panel that talks about, you know, what, what are some of the perceptions right now of multiplayer and how is Sea of Thieves going to be different? Yes. Though through yeah. you know, giving you the freedom over how you play, the freedom of how you communicate and the decisions we're making around, uh, I guess, the progression system, the decisions we're making about how players can play together, how that can, what we believe, change perceptions of what multiplayer can be and that potential of you know, multiplayer has all this kind of all untapped potential that it doesn't really feel like, um, other games are really using and we yeah. feel like Sea of Thieves is so well positioned to really change someone's minds who've, who've been maybe burned in the past or they haven't found a multiplayer game that appeals to them mm-hmm. I think like Sea of Thieves could potentially be for everyone yeah. and like Shelley showed off the video of the small ship and we talked about it for ages it was awesome to finally be able to actually yeah. show yeah. the small ship as well it was wicked and we uh, revealed the brigging mechanic for the first yeah. time as well and we showed some more of the <laughs> non-verbal <laughs> communication <laughs> Not non-verbal combat, John. For the audience, <laughs> Kato's combat. licking John. Uh-oh. Come on. I think it, and it, it was important to get across that um, it's not like a, the single-player ship or the soul ship, the small ship, whatever you want to call it, is there just for those types of players. It's mm-hmm. Everyone can use it. You've just got, it just gives you that freedom to play just how you want to play. Just to try something else. If you want to be the type of player who plays with your friends, you can play with the large ship on them. And if they're not, no, they're not around that evening you can jump on the small ship yeah. or if you want to play the small ship for the entire game you've got the freedom to do that and the, th- the, th- <laughs> the thinking there is that um, 
It's just like the panel. Yeah. <laughs> when we showed off the small ship, it was a similar reaction. <laughs> um, Again, for the audio, there was a dog waltzing around the table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In case they're wondering what the noise is. Yeah. But the cool, the cool thing about it is that the, the, when you're on that small ship, whether you're playing alone with one other person or you've got more friends on it, you're still in that shared world. Yeah. So you could come into the game and decide to play that way and you know, decide to avoid other people, play the game, as Joe said, like a stealth game where you're hiding your ship behind islands, you're choosing to sail away when you see a sail mm -hmm. on the horizon. But you will meet other players in the world. Uh, on the Ferry of the Damned, you might you might um, come across the large ship in the world and think, oh, I really want to have that experience. Yeah. And then decide to, well, maybe I'll make a friend or I'll match mate with one other person. And maybe you'll eventually get to and have and that like large ship experience. Yeah. Uh, or you can choose to not do or that. And build down. And what, the point it's all is about you've choice, got complete yeah. freedom. Yeah, it's all about choice. And like, Air Games got that freedom in its mechanics. You've got freedom to go wherever you like in the world and you should have the same freedom over how you choose to play. Yeah. Because so. the thing I've said before, I've never played online multiplayer games and this is the, the only one that I've tried because hesitation of, you know, hearing things about abuse perhaps. And I know yes. that we talked, um, you guys covered the pirate code. Yes, so a lot of that, that perception panel. that... Um, Multiplayer communities have, are overwhelmingly toxic. Yes. There's a big toxic component to them, like giving players the power to deal with um, troublemakers on their crew, mm -hmm. but also ensuring that we build a friendly and welcoming community, that we yeah. put the right safeguards in place and air community, we want to keep it as welcoming as it is now because yes. we've already got a great community. Yeah. It's about keeping that ethos as, as, we, as, we, as we expand grow. out the game. And we obviously yeah. hope as well, because of having this really positive, welcoming community, that these avenues that we're kind of putting in there like the small ship or the non-verbal communication where there are ways for people who aren't quite sure how much they want to get involved. Maybe they yeah. don't want to identify themselves using voice or maybe they're just not comfortable going in and using voice or not comfortable going and playing on the large ship. But when they do take those options, those avenues in, we hope that they'll discover what a welcoming and friendly community yeah. it is and then maybe even graduate on to those other experiences. Yeah. yeah. So is it worth maybe talking about, um, this is the first time probably since March or February when, when we kind of expanded the world and we added features in there that we've kind of grouped uh, a bunch of features together under mm. a kind of banner of like um, similar, <laughs> <or> similar <laughs> like. Well, we no, E3 we put in, like we massively enriched yes, the wider I world think it's and more emergent the, world. The right? theming. Yeah, but I mean in terms sort of, of like, like a package of features yeah. almost. Uh, I don't necessarily agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to no, figure just, out what well, he means. Yeah, no, no, yeah. just because like we did purposely for E3 when we when we like work with the team at the kind of in in February and March we were like, you know, what what should our priorities be? And it was very much about put as much emergent tools for players and also emergence from the world. So it was it, overall that was a big kind of emergent richness to the experience, right? Yeah. So so it was. A big release that we valued around, but I know what you mean. But like, I, like in my head, like there, there wasn't one in between. But then, this is certainly one that we, we've, yeah, we've themed. Yeah, uh, so. but I mean, the way we we were communicating it to our our audience yeah. at the moment is like, yeah, this is this is all about a new type of multiplayer game and moving forward. I think that's the plan, similar to to kind of group these yeah. things together. Oh, absolutely, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, rather than just drip feeding stuff out, um, like for the for the wider community and wider player base, Le like both. Um, leading up to launch and then beyond. It's very much about grouping stuff into yeah. kind of mm -hmm. meaningful yeah. clumps of features or groups of features. Right? Yeah, if I guess if you were, like your example, if you were to look back at, as Joe said, it's that adding all these emergent features that ensures that if some play a game in technical alpha and they played it on the show floor at E3, it would play differently each time. So you'd have a, a beyond just coming across with an, another ship, there'd be things in the world that gave you different opportunities and each session would be different. And then everything we've talked about in the panel is about how can we take that experience and give people more options to be able to experience it their way and have the controls to make it um, robust in terms of the crew. So if they've got someone on there who's causing trouble, you've got control over the session. And then we've got obviously stories that we still want to tell around you know, progression that we're working on at the moment and the quest stuff. I mean, all that is still coming. So I imagine it'd be similar in that way. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, that is the biggest story we have left to tell, like without a doubt. Um, and 
And it's, it's kind of bundled, isn't it? The kind of the quest stuff is it's it's fundamentally part of that whole thing. And yeah. so we don't want to kind of start drip feeding it. You've got to have all these pieces together to understand it, to be able to give feedback and play test it. It's all got to come together, as well. Yeah. Well, like, even on our high level roadmap, like, and I'm, I'm visualizing it here, but um, okay, like, you've got the different teams and the different stories or, or kind of clumps of stuff we want to tell. And the progression, it's the progression story isn't just the progression team, right? There's right. there's AI, there's quests, there's game experience. Like, it's, it's pretty much across the board. And I think. I think, I think it's fair to acknowledge that is the biggest question people have about this game. Like, why yes. am I going to be playing this game? Why should, like, I, keep why should I keep playing it? Why, why, like, just, you know, the, the fun session experience is cool, but why? And it's the biggest thing we've been discussing from a kind of marketing and PR and community perspective mm -hmm. and everything around, like, you know, how much do we talk about it versus how much do yeah. we show and we tell about it? And so definitely <laughs> this year, this side of Christmas, like, we have a big plan to tell that story um uh but we want to be showing and telling a kind of yeah. a real mix right yeah. um uh and getting people playing the, some of that stuff too like that that is definitely our plan for this side of christmas so a lot if not the majority of the team are all driving towards that right because it's a big thing it's a lot of work um uh but we're we're through a lot of it so like yeah it's that's going to be fun to start testing with people and start talking about and um because we had Aaron Greenberg, we had John Dongermans, Lee Humphreys, etc. from the marketing team here like last week, a couple of weeks ago. Just last, uh, yeah. like a few last, weeks ago. No, it would have been a few weeks ago. Week, yeah. It? But um, a few weeks ago. Yeah. It was the first time that we'd really talked them through and like <clears throat> you were very much kind of presenting the mm -hmm. plans of this and the vision for yeah. this and showing a bunch of screenshots and, yeah. and everything and a bit of footage as well. Mm -hmm. um, and the energy and the excitement that those guys had leaving. Yeah. And we just had another visit here today, actually we took through the same plans. Yeah. And like when people get the why, they're like, ah. Yeah. Oh, is what it, being a pirate legend means and all that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, right? but it's, it, like, it's, it's almost like I feel like self-conscious when I tell people because mm -hmm. it's just a lot of stuff mm -hmm. all at once um, about how you think about voyages and progression and quests. It's yeah. like it's it's, it, it's a, a big piece all together and it, it, it's all linked, it's all interlinked, it's all dependent on each other. So yeah. um, we'll be yeah. giving the same message yeah. to our players yeah, at some there's point. There's no yeah. one well, simple it, answer of what progression yeah. is in Sea well, of Thieves. It's a suite of... Features. Yeah, and I think well, we've been well, you've been pitching it, I guess, to the team, almost like you know, presenting it to the team. Yeah. Like since kind of E three, just after E three, yeah. was when we really took everybody through. Hey, here's the journey we want to kind of go on and build and, and and get players into. And like so, over the last couple of months, seeing kind of some of that stuff, and especially more recently in mm. the build, like you know, in the morning play tests where you the voyage voting's in there, and you're yeah. like, whoa, this is like yeah. like it made sense on paper, but it's actually even more so now that even that physical dagger thing yeah. stabbed into it, and yeah. like the different quest types are starting to come in and uh, like seeing some of the stuff on Chris Marlowe's machine the other day with the uh, oh. with the, with the, with the, the with thing the stuff. with oh, the thing I'm assuming you're role now no yeah, 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 yeah. But, like, but, but genuinely but that like, is really cool though right? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing yeah. the thing that made people shriek in the all hands mm, last, that, was, uh, that was me I've, that was I'm you, still getting yeah. apologies today <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah it sounds like we could have done a better job of yeah. selling the vision of what that was I wish I was there I'll give you the version later Yeah, it's going to be they heard it in the back row okay Really? Yeah, but I'm still so, <laughs> just starting to, like seeing that stuff go from vision to now actually happening yeah. is like is super cool. And then what's still to come over the next kind of months? Month, month plural. All, but, um, all that. All like the imp what, am I, what am I trying to say? The important thing is that that vision for how quests work and the voyage voting and how that leads into players' progression. There's some of it, you're like, this is this is going to work exactly as we intend. Like, yeah. this will go in and it will work because you've just got conviction about it and we just need to get it in there. But there's certain things along the way, like that voyage mm -hmm. voting mechanic, yep. where you've there's a vision for it. And you go, this is going to be amazing. This feels like it's going to be a great mechanic. But yeah. you've got to build it and you've got to test it. And if we were to lay all our cards on the table now and say everything and say everything what it is, there's an absolute chance that some of those, the components of that plan will change. Yeah. That's the reason why we can't just, as much as yeah. I'd love to, um, <laughs> we, 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 it's just not right because yeah. we, we will be changing elements of it. And that is like, however frustrating it is for our players who, lo who love a game as much as us, um, it wouldn't be fair to kind of say, oh, sorry, that I know that sounded really yeah. cool, but we, that we can't implement it the way you expect. So by the time we tell that story, we would have proven out all those fundamentals we would have played it in the game and then we can kind of go wholeheartedly like this is it and hopefully it's going to be in your hand shortly after this told the story. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So the... Um, 
We've also had a time schedule change for the play sessions, is that right? Yes, the, so the regular sessions that were happening on Wednesdays have shifted to Saturdays and they're now 24 hours. So I actually played on Saturday, I was like, I'm just going to dip in and I played for like four, five hours with people, but um, I think that's opened it up to a lot more people who couldn't fit into that little window that we had previously, so that's gone down really well. And with that, we've also introduced Pioneers. Yes, we have. Yeah. So Pioneers are... Uh, indeed, yeah. So <laughs> like, this, is, <laughs> this is definitely something that we're kind of trying out to see how, how, like, you know, to see how it works for us because we've identified people who are like very active, very engaged that we th- think we can test kind of um, a bunch of earlier features on it's them more with to, rough and ready. And yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. and um, uh, and get us into a state that like we can, you know, we can well we can have confidence in the build yeah. regularly, have confidence in these features coming online earlier because we test them here with you know our test team and then with people across the team and it's actually been getting quite distracting for the team having to like we do a rolling play test for three hours on a Wednesday afternoon and we have to fill all the spaces on all of those crews and those people should be getting on with and making the game right um and so and we've got all of these really great kind of you know insiders and alpha testers that could be helping us test that at scale and so we can put features out whether it's getting feedback on the features themselves or whether it's actually just testing that we've not broken anything yeah like all of that that that's what this is for and we don't we didn't feel right subjecting everyone to that. <laughs> you know, like not everyone who wants that. Some people will want more polished features and to give feedback on those. Because, yeah. you know, it's even what we, we're going to be putting features out and going, actually, we don't want your feedback yet. Um, you know, we just, we're just putting them out there for now because they're not ready. Um, and uh, but and then we go, take them to the wider group and get feedback from everybody at that stage. Um, so, yeah, so we're trying it out. It's, just, it's not, you know, it's a small group of people compared to the amount that are in yeah. the, um, the full alpha. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes, really, see how that kind of program goes mm-hmm. like we think it's going to be super helpful for us like can understand it might be a bit frustrating for some people who are like oh why aren't why am i not in the group why do i not why am i yeah why is there We've two groups and stuff? Of that. yeah we, yeah so, we try to explain it on the forums and i think people get that it's yeah. it's just another way for us to test and make things the best they can be for when yeah. it gets into everybody's hands. Yeah. So we've only just kicked it off, and it seems to be going okay for us. We seem to be learning stuff. So yeah. Um, and it was even hard for us to get features into a state to give to that broader alpha audience. That was still earlier than we would have done for a lot of things. Yeah. But now, like, we had a big debate with kind of with ourselves and the leadership team around the scuttling thing. Um, you remember that discussion, right? About should we put it on without a yes no toggle? Like, so you could literally press one button and sink your ship and be like, what the. F- <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, but we wanted to test. Like we, we felt that once people had got over that usability hurdle, that they can now test this feature mm-hmm. and see does it help with kind of griefing or not and, and stuff. But again, making that much if like we can push things out earlier. We can when they were a bit mm-hmm. clunky and a bit janky yeah. and stuff. It's, we're doing it for the first time, right? Yeah. So it's we're learning as much as like, absolutely, with, yeah, with as the they are, yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. And we might make missteps in terms yeah. of those decisions and what we do and everything. But like we hope that our community is understanding around that and will give yeah. us feedback and help us kind of get better on on any of the things we're doing right Mm -hmm. whether it's the game design or how we're running our alpha or or everything else right so um we're always looking at that feedback we're always looking and and looking to to do better and make improvements and i think for um obviously we're at new york comic-con we announced the the small ship and locking people in the brig and all these kind of things to do with the new type of multiplayer game and from a content perspective of what we can like see coming from video you can imagine that obviously we're going to take a kind of deeper look into some of those features because we skimmed over quite a lot of that when we uh, when we talked about it at the panel um so you can, we'll see that obviously over the the next coming weeks and then i think it naturally leads into the xbox one x's uh, launch in early november as like so you can imagine obviously that that becomes important for us then um and in terms of the next kind of months worth of roadmap that's kind of like what we're looking at from from that standpoint of video so i think just laying expectations on the table of what people can expect well, yeah, to yeah. see. And we're, we're definitely having conversations with Xbox and with the marketing guys about how can we fold into the Xbox One X launch in terms of like, mm-hmm. you know, what what are, what news do we want to share or what stuff do we want to show? How do we want to talk about Sea of Thieves as part of that whole celebration, right? Um, uh, so yeah, that's going to be that's going to be fun, right? Yeah. Um, but this time as well, um, I will be out in TwitchCon. Uh, at TwitchCon, so if there's anyone uh, who's watching who wants to come and chat, like I'll be out there. So hit me up. Um, this is like hit going out on the Thursday. <laughs> That's yeah. an, like an American thing, right? Yeah. Hit I'm me not... up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Don't know what it means, but uh, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Give me a shout if you're over there, and uh, 
and uh, have a chat. I'd be excited to meet anyone. And you will be wearing a gold t-shirt at all times. I will be wearing a gold t-shirt. Yeah, at all any the same shows one every where you know day. we are. Yeah. yeah, this is what we've all just <laughs> been wearing the same one <laughs> since, since, just, since we started. Yeah. I just spray the deodorant straight on. To <laughs> Don't even bother going underneath. <laughs> Do you remember when we first got I these t-shirts no and we were we were initially skeptical? It's like. Oh yeah, totally. I was like, uh, too, too no, bling, um, too bling. Oh, I'd love I'm never going to wear something as gaudy as that. Everywhere you go, people stop you and go, they love it. I love that t-shirt. Yeah, no, but then they ask for the one that you're literally wearing yeah. and you have to be like, uh, no. <laughs> there was a woman in uh, Wasabi in Birmingham New Street Station who asked me if she could have the particular one I was wearing. Really? I've I had like, multiple people yeah. <laughs> ask that and then you point out, well, no, that's you know, then I don't have anything to wear, at which point they go, oh my God, I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, no, they don't rude. think that one step ahead. No, and it, was, it, was, it was always guys it's and then that happen. Britishness kicks in and they go, oh my God, I can't rem- I believe I just asked you that. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that kind of leads on to... What can what? that lead on to? <laughs> Got <laughs> shiny t-shirts and people asking if they can have the shirt <laughs> off the back. Nick Virgin did give someone the shirt off his back at a show once. Yeah, he lost a bet and literally just took it off and... But considering how sweaty the shows are, I'm not sure it was a great prize. Washes out. Wasn't really a seg- <laughs> wasn't really a segue in terms of what we were just talking about as much as literally on my piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, now let's go to the like, next like, point. <laughs> it was just the person in your ear going, "Move on." Move. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for the smooth segue then. Uh, so what have we all been working on? Well, I've just kind of said what you I've see, been working on. You could on, have but. said, speaking of shiny stuff, what have we all been working on? Oh, oh, okay. yeah. Do you want to swap? <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to stick you on a pile of cushions Shall I go first? I, I genuinely don't know where to begin um, I think, like, So do you, do you go first because you, you don't know what to say? Yeah, yeah. Well, because of so many stuff isn't uh, Well, that, yeah. well yeah. I just think it, what I've referred to earlier Which is um, I guess Quest um, Along with Shelley um, Quest, Quest Variety, the different play styles we're building um, How that feeds into The progression system How we're rewarding players And then um, not only working on it, but then we've had, as Joe referred to, we've had visits, so getting people um, more up to speed internally um, with what we're doing. Um, yeah, I think I'll leave it there. Before he says too much. It's all a bit spoilerific, isn't it? That wasn't... Sp- what, um, no, oh, like, oh, yeah. I'm just thinking. Yeah. No, I always I, have to be a bit mysterious. How can I? Mysterious stuff. New quest types. Yep. The stuff that was, what do we call it? Cool and awesome on Chris's machine. Um, <laughs> some really exciting stuff with the... AI team yeah. that is monstrously good. Mm. Oh. Mm. That's probably, <laughs> <laughs> That's probably, about, it. probably about it for the hints. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've been getting the Pioneer program out, uh, getting the videos out. We've got two new people on the community team, so we've been settling them in. So you may have come across Daily on Twitter and Dee in our forums. She's been looking after them. Um, yeah. I think the thing we can talk about when we mentioned this at the panel. Um, which it, and Joe's just mentioned it as well the whole voyage voting process mm. yeah let's in, talk about something we can in, talk in, individuals <laughs> come to, individuals come together um, on the ship as part of a crew and they're going to want to do different things and they might have voyages that reflect different play styles but we wanted to allow the crew as part of a democracy to decide what they do together mm-hmm. um, just like a pirate crew would have done um, so and we wanted to make it feel appropriate for Sea of Thieves so um, players going to the captain's table and literally putting down their voyages and then using, literally putting the dagger in to vote, yeah, I want to do this one, or oh, Shelley's got a cool voyage, let's do that one. But then the crew coming to a... You always it's do. Really good. <laughs> you the crew come into a decision on what they then do. So that's moving from what the game is now, which is players start the game and they already have... It's preloaded. Um, um, ...maps that reflect a play style mm-hmm. in their uh, radial, in their RB radial, to one where you start the game and... You don't have to do a voyage. You can just explore. You can just go seek out other ships if that's what you want to do. Mm-hmm. You can just go see the world. Or you can choose one of many, many voyages. So there's that. And then we, I think more and more players are realising that we've got a loadout area on the ship. So on the middle deck now has some chests, which I've seen mm-hmm. some debates on the forum on what they are. Um, so that that's being worked on as part of the progression system. So I think people have really worked out what they're for. But that, that kind of speaks to the whole point of, like I've just mentioned with the voyages, a lot of these mechanics we could have just put into a menu, 
um, or we could have just had as, a, as an inventory tab. But yeah. by grounding it somewhere around some physical objects, it makes it more of a social thing. So like when you're voting on the voyages on the captain's table, I, when I walk past the table, I can see what voyages have been put down. I can see that there's votes on it because the daggers are next to it. When I see someone customising on the middle deck, I know that because they're standing in the customisation area. They're not just static on the deck of a ship buried in the menu. Mm -hmm. So I think players will see more and more of that physicality um, that makes their game what it is. And with, like, we haven't put the voting stuff on yet in the alpha, have we? Nope. No. Not why? <laughs> Because it seems cool. fine. It's, yeah. it's wondering what you're talking about. It. It's, we, we're it's, it's looking to, to put the... it in the next yeah. client attack. It's coming. Yeah. And then it will shortly go into... TV. Yeah, yeah. Because it just feels like something that yeah, we could totally yeah. learn from, learn the voting. Well, the moment, the moment we got the mechanic in... Stalemate, we, et it, Well, the moment we had the, the very bare-bones mechanic in um, and it was still being worked on, we went ahead and spoke to the animation team and the, the art teams, like, let's... let's make it feel awesome, yeah, which yeah. is where all the sound came from, the dagger going and the wobble of the dagger and making it feel really compelling to do. So you want to do it again and again. It's a fun process for the crew to go through. So we're, we're not far off. Um, players will see that very shortly. Sweet. And feedback. Well, we, we're um, getting to a place where I think we're happy with it. We're still tweaking, but like that that will be a new feature going in where what we're going to want that feedback because it'll be a critical part of the progression system going forward. Yeah. And obviously we worked on the Pirates Code stuff leading up to um, New York Comic Con. Yeah, that was well. fun, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, um, touched on it, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But just to like, we you know we've got those seven that we've put out there and we're, yeah, we're, going, we're going through feedback, through feedback and stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, there might be a couple that are a bit similar or, or a bit hard to understand, but um, which I think even... Kind of, I realised. I think when I was like yeah. presenting them at the, uh, at, uh, you know, coming, oh well, this might be similar. Yeah. We went when through I, when I described it again. I'm yeah. like, oh, it's the same as that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, yeah, it, it's getting it to be clear, but in t on tone. That's the challenge. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, yeah. You need to be able to understand it, but also it's not a dry set of instructions. Yeah. It's a pirate's like, code for a reason. We wanted to feel like that pirate's code that were actually they existed. Pirates. Yeah live up to a code and crews had their own codes but a code that's for air community yeah. that represents what we want sea thieves to be but still feels like it's part of the world it's not just a dry list of community instructions where we're almost talking to the players um as if they're not part of this world and yeah. we wanted to keep that like immersive and the version that you guys presented at comic-con that's actually built off a hot topic that we put in the forums so actually all of that has been formed from what the community has said. It's not us saying, these are the rules and you must abide by yeah. them. It has to come we from said, the players. We said, we want to work with you and we'll create it together. Yeah, yeah so we kind of got the, the, the text of what, what we wanted to say and then we've gone, how can we make this sound? Yeah. Hey, we not want to make this feel pirate and make it feel part of our world. So we tried different ways of saying it, didn't we? And yeah. Sometimes it went too far and you just... It was too hard to understand, wasn't it? Yeah, like the first one. We wrote it as riddles, isn't it? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It was too obtuse to begin with. Okay. The, um, but there's been other things obviously going in as well because I think we we're, we put features in like just given the skeletons as an example we put features in but then we continually can try and improve those as well like yep. those are kind of just stepping up each time like I've seen some things obviously being added uh, recently you've seen some things <laughs> I've seen some things <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some things <laughs> I mean the, it's a really good point um, and it'll become more more and more clear as we go through the rest of the year where like the skeletons we've got in the game now like we can't, we can't really vary the difficulty of them. I feel uh, like you have, though. I played at the weekend, and my God, I got murdered. Uh, we, <laughs> like, we, t oh, we tweak forward, lot. we tweak back, and we're, like, as John says, we're, we're always improving their behaviour. So yeah. their behaviour improves, and we don't balance. They can come across as harder, yeah. and intensity can change. And there's just an emergent, there's emergent variance anyway. Like sometimes you just get more, sometimes yeah. you just get less, and we wanted that surprise. But because there's players don't really opt into different challenges. Players don't really progress yet. Yeah. It is just a base. There's just skeletons in the world. Um, so we can't make them easy. We can't really make them harder yet. So the way players feel it, think about skeletons will change as we add more features into the game and there'll be more variety in there. Yeah, and that the same, I think that goes for things across the board, right? Like, and this, like, even just the base set of, like, items that we see mm -hmm. in, in the world at the moment, like, the expansion on those, I saw yeah. some really nice things. Well, I played on the weekend and I didn't have my blunderbuss on my tankard. And they went, well, you have to go buy them. And there I hadn't go. realised that I'd gone in yet. So Step one. I was without my tankard. <laughs> Step one, mate. Baby steps. 
baby steps to the finish line. <laughs> yeah. I was playing, like you said, I had to get, there were multiple tankards that you could go and mm. get. I was like, ooh. Yeah. I got a gold one, and then, but the texture wasn't right when I held it. And it, it was, was just frogs like outside. glowing white. Like. <laughs> 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 frogs outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's not turned on. Yeah. Because it would be thoroughly <laughs> underwhelming. <Yeah. laughs> You've got to imagine it at the moment. Well, we, can, we can imagine it. We know what's coming. <laughs> Um, so going into some of the questions, uh, mm -hmm. this one I'm sure is related to the game, but uh, you've got to pronounce people's names correctly this at, time. Uh, you mauled the names last time. At I'm a Canuck. So they're Canadian. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it said, should oh, we be afraid lying. of whatever is moaning during the night time? I like time? to think of one. Sorry. Should would, we be afraid of, of whatever is moaning during the night time? I would say. Be afraid, be very in afraid. In game or out of game? Yes, yes, like, yeah. oh. I'm, I'm going to ask you next in game. <laughs> Sounds pretty scary. <laughs> yeah. It's two very different answers. Yeah. <laughs> One is, like, phone the police. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the surround sound, it's hard to tell. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh... like we've, we've been foreshadowing some things for quite a while uh, around that, and... You should definitely be afraid. I got told I was imagining it when I mentioned it the other day. <laughs> it's definitely a thing. They implied that I was drinking and gaming and that I was yeah. making it up. Which we don't encourage. No. <laughs> no. I don't do that. Don't drink and game. Yeah. But, uh... It's just building up its confidence at the moment. <laughs> it's just yeah. putting the fear into all of you and yeah. then slowly it will reveal itself. Just having a little look. Yeah. Yeah. He's out he has a little peek. <laughs> He Very or she shy. has a little Very bit. Just shy. whenever you're not looking. He does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when the servers are down, he's, he's there. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> Get ready. Uh, Salem Vice wants to know if we'll publish data similar to E3. It was interesting seeing actual players mention and what they excelled in. Mm. So thank you. It probably means the infographic type stuff that we did. Oh, oh similar yeah, to what we, we did before. That should could... probably do one of those, wouldn't we? I don't know. We, yeah. we, did, we did have some telemetry issues, didn't we, at Gamescom? Yes. Which, like, just some of the data that came through wasn't, like, it wasn't reporting correctly. But yeah. I don't think it was all of it. I think it was maybe some of the newer stuff we'd yeah. put in. So I'm sure we could do one. Um, I think but, so, the one I think, yes. infographic. That was yeah. pretty cool. I think Simon's already asked Alex to really? do one. So there may be, may be one on the way. Awesome. Yeah, but a lot, a lot of the stuff we were trying to learn and stuff, like we didn't quite get the data right. we wanted, yeah. which was quite frustrating. That's why, because we would have loved to have shared some of that stuff, but it didn't quite come through. Yeah. So. I think if we are on that out there, we should, like, it's something we could look at doing monthly, couldn't we? Look at that. Commitment. There we go. You, well, said, it, you said it on the, the podcast, The mate. data you is there. Photoshop. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Pretty good. You, you, <laughs> you've seen my presentation, I'll do it in paint. Yeah, I'll do it in MS Paint. Come on. Like, no, so you've well, seen my RIP MS, MS Paint skills. They're endearing. Have you seen my thumbnails? Is it? Yeah. Thumbnails. They're getting rid of MS Paint. Did I you not see this? I am resigning live Did you not see it? It's trending on Twitter. What am I going to do to draw stick men? <laughs> <laughs> like, honestly, I don't know any other tools. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'll have to scan in pen and paper. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how to scan not, stuff in? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll, get, like, I'll get into trouble from one of our uh, video guys the other day for erasing around people in the thumbnails, <laughs> yeah. like going into their hair, like just yeah. the time. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Drawing lines. Like, There's tools for this. <laughs> it's like, this is the way I've always done it. <laughs> <laughs> the giant eraser. Yeah. <laughs> it's not broken, don't fix it. Um, okay. Uh, at Shafication. Um, Shafication. Shafication. Can you explain who the dead pirate is on the table? Why is he dead? And also, why haven't you moved him yet? Thank so, you. So, he's just no, asleep. No, no, no. <laughs> when we put out the Tavern oh. Talk tweet, I had to find, I'd like, find a picture to go with it. And the only one I could find is when we had Captain Bones collapsed on the, oh, yeah. the table. So, the dead pirate, skeleton pirate, has he's, become a living dog. He's the guy that has all the ideas for the game. Mm, we just channel is. his vision into Sea of Thieves. Because he's really been there. <laughs> he's lived, no, he he's has. lived. We're basically place. recreating his memories, right? Yeah. yeah, he has been there. It's a real place. Yeah, yeah. Yep. confirmed. <laughs> and now he hangs you... about in reception. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just he likes to watch yeah. the people come and go and get a coffee. It's... Sometimes the sports on the TV. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a big fan of the music channel. Yeah, as music well. videos. <laughs> <laughs> Huge newest, fan of like, newest Taylor Swift video. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 Taylor Swift, big fans. <laughs> Exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> they, can, they can add that to the list of fans about yeah. Captain Bones. Yeah. Loves Taylor Swift and Snickers. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> oh, Snickers. Uh -oh. oh, we've got him up again. Did we oh. talk about Snickers? <laughs> so, uh, at Nitron Rob says, what are the different weather conditions and how do they affect gameplay? You worked on that, right? I did, yeah. Well, we have a storm. 
fine. Um, <laughs> and it gets rainy in the storm and lightning uh, comes down and can strike you. I've been, I got struck by lightning three times on Saturday. Yeah. It's a, it might be a little bit overzealous at the moment. We were I'm talking just, about just that like yesterday. Really unhappy. Um, Hello. It's like, yeah, lightning's cool. Let's just do it all the time. Um, and something we've actually added recently is that the being in the storm will damage your ship as well so you, it, it sounds awesome you hear this like creaking and the hull sounds like it's under yeah. strain and the f- kind of further into the storm you are the more damage you'll start to take and the holes will start popping it's also really dark and hard to see when you're and in there as well your ship starts filling up with water because all the, the water rain, is coming in the rain does fill up the ship bailing and i was trying to steer in a storm and i was steering right yeah. and the wheel was turning, turning yeah left. so it's the currents of the storm will pull yeah. the wheel as well so so, so you need to work together to get through the storm or decide, do you actually even want to go through it? Is it worth it? Do you have the resources to go through it? So, yeah. so. so I was playing with the small ship like yesterday and um, I got trapped in a storm basically. And that I happened just, to me as well. I just put the, um, the, what do you call it, the anchor down and just waited. I was just like, this is too much. Not just like those well, big I, waves. I came in so the next day and was like, stuff. guys, the game is broken because yeah. I was steering to the right and the ship was steering to the left. <laughs> like, no, that's on purpose. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I think we will but look was... at, we will look at more weather yeah, conditions yeah. in the future. But I think the, oh yeah, the goal, the question was actually you know, about other weather conditions. The goal to begin with was like that epic visual of seeing a storm on the horizon, having that choice of, well, as a player, I know, well, now we've always wanted to add this damage that the, the, the storm can put on the ship because of yeah. the strain on the hull. That you've got that choice of do I push on through the storm mm-hmm. or do I deliberately sail around it? Yeah. And that decision that you make will be a reflection of the voyage you're on, where you're sailing to, whether someone's chasing you, whether someone's yeah. ahead, what you've got on board. So we... it just it, it's a big moment. And it, obviously, it's um, We just big had part a storm chasing us down. So we well, of got, course they're, they're always moving. Yeah, yeah, so we got to an island. There was a storm. We all kept getting murdered by skeletons. So at any one point, three of us were dead, and one of us was guarding the three chests. And then we were spawning on a ship, another like on another island, and sailing the ship yeah. to us, getting killed again. It just it took us about forty minutes. <laughs> I think even in a in a, even in a current world, there's still islands I've not been on. Um, Same here in a storm. So like, oh, I've never oh, been I've, on some I haven't even in been a storm, on. and it's, mm. the atmosphere is completely different. Yeah. But some I haven't been on at all. I went down into a cave system on Saturday. Never seen that before. Because we had our storm in first not moving, didn't we? We had it, mm. like, when we very first put the storm in, we got all the effects working, but it was kind of always in the same place. And yeah. I think um, when we showed it at E3, I it think, was, if I remember it rightly, static, yeah. um, we just had the static storm, and then as soon as we got in that it could move, and you were on the island for the first time, like, it's getting a bit dark, and then the rain starts yeah. coming in. It adds so much atmosphere. Mm. It's really cool. Especially when it's heading the same direction you are yeah. just like yeah. leave me alone <laughs> and you've got the the trees and stuff now all oh, sway yeah. really yeah. hopefully in the wind That's, that was a really cool addition the um but it is always a constantly bammy 36 degrees celsius right <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely confirmed no, is, it, is cold, that the actual cold temperature in the, it's yeah. cold in the storm it's chilly oh. can't you feel it that it's cold in the storm <laughs> i do you don't get four do you know 4d at your house The world is very humid though. Yeah. Like you go there ten minutes, you need a shower. It's really (laughs) close and sticky. Yeah, close up to the Yeah. It's like a desert. Yeah, it's yeah, but it's it's very it's always cloudy and close and muggy. It's yeah. It's not somewhere you were on holiday really. It's like like downstairs barn D, basically in the middle of summer. Yeah. Mm. It is. Yeah. That's why I didn't leave my barn all (laughs) time. That's what it's modelled after. (laughs) The Aaron Lee, so one of our deck hands, wanted to know for pioneers, are we to expect a steady flow of new features, and what's the release strategy from pioneer tested to general tech alpha? It's uh, like <laughs> we're kind of in the middle of of, of working that yeah. out as we run through it, to be honest. But um, it's we I think you'll definitely see sorry. features earlier, yep. um, and in the kind of in their gestation, in their kind of creation period, right? Yeah. Um, you know, but there's no reason that we wouldn't skip the pioneer group to actually go mm. no actually this we can test this with the wider ready. group because yeah. we look at each feature don't we like even the voting yeah. one like potentially you could go actually like we've been testing this for a while in our internal play tests like there's no issues have come out of it we could actually test it this with our group depends, you could do that yeah. like, like it's not just our confidence but it's how finished they are like yeah. how kind of ready for a, yeah. a wider yeah. audience like, they are yeah. Um, yeah, but, but like you said sometimes it will just go straight to tech yeah. alpha sometimes well, it will go to pioneers and then we'll have to iterate loads and it might be a while before it goes to tech alpha sometimes it'll go to pioneers and we'll be like yeah cool and we've yeah. finished it and it's ready to go yeah. to 
Yeah, so, and yeah. It's, it depends what question we're trying it's to answer fluid. with each one, right? Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. sometimes it's technical; it's not creative. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. So yeah, that's it. Sometimes it is a d big design one. We need millions of people yeah. playing it. Yeah. Sometimes it's just a technical question, like like, and um, that we need to just test at scale. Mm -hmm. And it's so it really like we we do that with each of them. It's like what question we're trying to answer. Do we need telemetry for it? Is it a survey thing or is it just a just hey yeah this works now we can oh, oh. maybe jump <laughs> <laughs> now we can give it to that wider group because we we've, we've proven it's not broken the build right yeah. like that's that's it could it could change yeah. yeah and we explained to the pioneers um, when we sort of answered yeah. some questions it, it's not going to be every week it's it's going to depend on when when we need them yeah. to assemble yeah. the Avengers but, but, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just say yeah. I think it's definitely important for everyone listening to to understand that. When we have conversations in a kind of, we st we call them stand-ups, where we get together each morning, we discuss the latest features, what everyone's been working on, so yeah. we, we can see progress of these features. The ultimate goal, like the light at the end of the tunnel, is always what we tell, turning it on for players. And turning it on for players means turning it on the technical alpha. Yeah. That is that is when it feels truly real for us. So Pioneers, I think it only ever feels like a stopgap. Like the, even if we use it or choose not to use it, like, like air, air goal of... Like, have we got that? Have you got that asset? Have you got that sound effect? Have you got that music? It's all about driving towards turning mm -hmm. it on for players, which is the technical alpha. Yeah. That is the ultimate focus. Yeah. yeah. So the cadence for turning it on for the, for the wider alpha audience should remain the same mm -hmm. or get quicker if we can maybe test something earlier than we normally would and get confidence it works yeah. and actually go, well, we can just put this on very Definitely. Right? Yeah. So, so it should be a positive for everyone, even though it might seem like people are being excluded from something. But yeah. like, you know, and we, we we did think about that, like very much. We had all those conversations around it. And part of that was like, hey, let's move the um, the full on inside of one to Saturday and go for 24 hours and kind of try and soften that blow a bit, right? Because, yeah. um, and give more people a chance to play in all the different time zones and stuff. So, you know, like, but yeah, it, it is about... Get, let's get confidence whether it's tech yeah. or whether it's design and then get them out as quickly as we can to the wider group. So and I, I, un I understand that criticism of that some players might have, which, well, it, it's an alpha, does it really matter? But yeah. I, I, I think we should be really proud that our alpha is really solid and yeah. largely it's really robust. It's like, I think like that's, it's a rare alpha. That's what a Sea of Thieves alpha is. Like it should be a yeah. great experience. And even though it's early and we're still going to balance it, it should still give you a great experience. So I think to your point, if we if we turn the voyage voting on for pioneers and we don't see in the data and we don't see through pioneer feedback that people are just soft locked and they can't continue and there's no absolute red flags around this feature. It was like, well, we've validated that the feature is working correctly way before we could have done it, just yeah. testing it rare and we can turn it on for technical alpha players a lot sooner. Yeah. You say that which label I had an alabaster beard error last night and I wanted my money back. They are. <laughs> it is like, it's like a... It's like a <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Customer yeah. service tickets. Rare all. Yeah. Like... WTF title. Why well, I had to... <laughs> <laughs> I think we're actually not saying that. Picture of your face. <laughs> <laughs> the minute well, they know you're that from Rare, I was like... That's shocked Kato, by the way. He's like, I know that acronym. Like, he's like... Like, those, those <laughs> moments, like when we, when we come to the... Uh, broadcast lab and we come to test the latest features and we get those errors it's just as frustrating for us as well it's like waking it's up from sad. a cold nightmare oh, i had people oh, giving me feedback mm. during my session they're like you're from rare when you go in on monday can you ask them to add this feature in i was like sure <laughs> <laughs> put it in the forums but i mention it yeah what was it uh oh um, really one of my crew and i can't remember who it is i'm really sorry uh likes basically smacking stuff with his cutlass mm. and there's some colored lanterns in one of the outposts mm. and when he smacks the uh the column yeah. with his cutlass, he wants the lanterns to swing. Oh. So he just he wants what if he means those little, those awesome little wants guns, more, like all yes. we've added. I love those. I do he wants more physical. Little orbies. Yeah, little they're really great, nice. Aren't they? Yeah. yeah. And so, all the little lanterns on islands. Last question um, from Aaron SC underscore. Yeah. I was expecting something. Was that, yeah. was that, no, yeah, just, is that it, underscore it, or just underscore? No, just, just underscore. Just underscore. End it however you like. Underscore. Will there be any safe zones? So, for instance, some places at the outpost islands where players can't attack one each there other. There won't. And we we tried out a lot of things in our prototype um, when we first started the project. Safe zones was one we explored. Um, ultimately, it can be exploited. And, of course, there's ways to mitigate it. You can have and the suggestions on the forum of, well, if you do certain things in safe zones, you can have AI patrols that attack you and but ultimately the idea of um 
being safe in the world, when the whole world is set up specifically around players emergently come across each other and there being enough outposts in the world where you've got a choice of where you turn in your um, voyage rewards, it just does not feel Sea of Thieves of having saved souls. I remember when we tried it in the prototype and Andy and I had Andy actually asked the engineer the day before to put it in and then the next day when we played it without realising it was on, even though we'd asked for it the day before, it was like, what, this is so weird, what's going on? Because it just doesn't click that that would be a thing, that you would yeah. be shooting someone and they wouldn't take damage. So, yeah, it I think even if didn't we... feel natural. There's like two ways to do it. Turn the feature on, turn it off again. Yeah. <laughs> There's two ways to do it. You've, you've got the mechanical route that I alluded to on the forums where you can change the mechanics to work a different way in the safe zone, which is like completely alien. I mean, that makes no sense in a world where there's no barriers. Um, and then you've got the route where you can do everything you want, but there's penalties for it. And it just, like, ultimately, our game will be richer and more diverse and more interesting if we can create meaningful reasons for players to make those connections where the rules stay the same. Mm -hmm. That somehow you're not gonna, you're gonna get punished if you go to an outpost, if you behave in a certain way. It should just work the same no matter where you are. Um, that's, that's what we want to do. So the answer yeah. is no. Just, John's just going, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, but good. the thing is there's enough space to have your own adventures and like you only encounter other crews occasionally and like there's enough space to explore islands and mess around on your ship and or choose not to engage in ship battles with others and stuff, right? It's like... And choose how much risk, you know, how you many chests have you got on board risk. before you go back to yep. an outpost. It's it's all in your hands as a crew. Like the, there are things that happen that take you by surprise, but you've got every power to strategize. And the goal was always to treat it as a... That's part of the feedback from the technical alpha is that looking at it as a level design problem. Like if people are saying there's always people attacking me at the outpost, maybe it's the position of the outpost and how many there are. Yeah. It's looking at it that way and ensure, like ensuring that we achieve the right gameplay, but make people are happy with, ensure people are happy with the balance of um, how much they encounter other people versus being able to progress. Yeah. So. Long rambling answer. But just looks no. like he's about to fall asleep. Oh yeah. I just, just like... No, I'm, I like I made the mistake of getting myself up an hour earlier today, thinking I've I've overcome the jet lag and I like, set my alarm an hour earlier, and it was like no, no just just go to bed. My dad used to do a trip every month, and I think it was he said it was the number of hours difference. It'll take that many days for you to feel normal again, and you guys are <sighs> on what like day three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got I'm a few fine, more days of this. I woke up at three a.m. Um, I dreamt dreamt of an alabaster beard error. <laughs> 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 that one where I was dripping in sweat and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get up. Like, I, I what, can't. Is that true? I don't know, but you just mentioned is it. Is that true? Did you, did you really, the, yeah, did what you really dream about it? Just drive me What's around. alabaster? I don't know what is that is. Is it a colour? Oh, it's yeah, like yeah, a kind of, it's, it's white. It's like a kind of uh, marble, isn't it? Really? I thought it isn't was Isn't it a material? Uh, yes, it's a, it's a stone. It's, it's like a, no, it's, but it's a cream white colour. I thought it was like, I'm going to have a sandwich in alabaster. No. No, you really want to. I mean, I've never had it. Just telling that no one's ever come up to me and there's a jar of alabaster, go put it in your no, sandwich. <laughs> anyway, on anyway. That note. <laughs> so um, obviously if you have been listening to the podcast, you probably want to check out the video to see this cute little doggy go and distract us most of the time on the way through this. I've never been licked so much. <laughs> Like by a dog or anything else, um, in, in about a twenty-minute period. Yeah, it was, uh, so yeah, go back and watch, and you'll see that it was quite distracting. And obviously, yes, tune in to our YouTube channel. Go there every every Thursday. We release a video. Sometimes you get a bonus video on a Tuesday, um, like this week has. Um, but yeah, keep checking that out for our weekly videos on there, and obviously tune in again for the for the next podcast. And just to remind everyone, hashtag Tavern Talk if you want to get your questions answered on the the next podcast that we have in October. And thank you very much, everyone. It's for... October now, dear. Oh, in November. Sorry, what do you do? <laughs> that was oh, that was like the most condescending <laughs> thing. Ever. October now, dear. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I forgive you. Where, where, did, where were you? I yeah. think we were just Thank saying... you very much. To, <laughs> 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 yeah, cheers, to everyone who was on here. And there. Thank you very much for viewing. And Point at the camera. Which one? Bye. Waving. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed what you just saw, then please like and subscribe to our channel and check out some more of our weekly videos. And if you're interested in the game's development, then click the link down here and join our Insider program for a chance to play the game early. Don't worry, I'll, I'll just wait here. <laughs>